Those who did not oppose Olympus were spared, including the brothers Prometheus and Epimetheus. These artful brothers were charged by Zeus to create both man and beasts to populate the new Olympian world. And then? Epimetheus worked first and created the beasts. He gave to each their qualities. The birds were given flight, the bear was made strong, the horse swift, the peacock beautiful. Continue, Pan. Prometheus then set about creating man, only to discover all the good qualities had been given to the beasts. Man would be a flawed creation. Hmm. Flawed. But to make up for this, Prometheus gave him two great gifts. An upright form in the image of the gods, and knowledge of fire, stolen from Olympus. With these gifts, Prometheus knew man would gain superiority over the beasts and the birds and the fish. What happened next? Epimetheus was jealous of his brother's craft, not wishing to be judged the lesser by Zeus. And so he made one more beast, taking back all the qualities from the others and giving them to this new creation. When he was done, there stood a magnificent golden ram. Epimetheus boasted that man was inferior to his creation in every way. Go on. Crafty Prometheus suggested they bring their two creations together to better judge their qualities. Prometheus knew that despite two great gifts, man also had vices, among them jealousy and a hunger for power. And a hunger for mutton. Continue, Pan. When the two were placed together, the man quickly saw that the ram was beautiful, potent, and completely trusting. Seeing this, the man fashioned a spear, slew the ram, and took its hide, which he then wore as a proud raiment. The ram's hide is the golden fleece. As old as mankind, a symbol of both his vice and his virtue. So the first weapon was a spear. Good choice. Continue, Pan. The Titan brothers were sent to Tartarus, Prometheus for stealing fire, and Epimetheus for creating the ram. The gods of Olympus then argued about what to do with the fleece. Zeus wanted to destroy it, but Hermes believed it should remain in the world to ensure everything done could be undone. Ultimately, a compromise was reached. The fleece would remain in the mortal world, provided it was kept under the care of wise Athena. That turned out well, didn't it? Should have given it to Ares. What of this next panel? And so, the fleece was kept here at Athena's temple on Kithra, guarded by her priests. Athena gave a drop of her divine blood to her first high priest as a boon to assist in this sacred duty. And so, the bloodline of Athena was established. There's a lesson for us all in that tale. Well done, Pan.